There is nothing more cucked and disgusting to me than an American who capes for the monarchy. Let's see what Charlie Kirk had to say. We have some amazing guests this hour. In fact, we're guest heavy today, and it's because the news warrants it. We have Bruce Gilley, who's a professor of political science, joining us all about British colonialism, a very provocative topic that will assuredly make the media lose their mind about how British colonialism actually made the world decent, separation of powers, habeas corpus, freedom of speech, individual property rights, the respect and the dignity of the individual. Where did all those come from? The Magna Carta, the great thinkers of Edmund Burke to Shakespeare. Why is it that the world actually became more civil while well, certain cultures are better than others saying this is the same guiding principle that justified british empire back when it existed okay what he's saying is unironically the oldest take of all time that a colonial superpower is actually the civilizing force americans did this with the native population right like americans did this with the indigenous population they said like well we were the civilizing force against the indigenous population here who were barbarians they were doing cannibalism they were killing each other and we came and killed all of them right so in a way it's it's just you know the tale is old as time itself now the idea is silly especially because it's might is right politics and that that attitude is is how you justify nazi regime too my man's hairline is all kinds of busted by the way maybe someone should imperial Maybe the Imperial Forces should colonize your hairline, fix that shit up, civilize that shit, brother. What the fuck? But there is no difference here than some fucking royal barker saying this shit way back in the day. Saying that out loud is a thought crime. British colonialism was the most benign global empire ever, and it's kind of sparked this conversation after what? the tragic- What? Bro, they did chattel slavery. What the fuck is he talking about? What do you mean the most benign? Brother- even like, even Winston Churchill, and it just just what Winston Churchill did in in uh, Bengal is is like, it's like he said benign. Like they did genocide. There is no, there is nothing benign about that. And incredibly unfair individual. Where did all those come from? The Magna Carta, the great thinkers of Edmund Burke to Shakespeare. Why is it that the world? actually became more civil while well, certain cultures are better than others saying that out loud is a thought crime british colonialism was the most benign global empire ever and it's kind of sparked this conversation after the tragic and incredibly unfortunate death of queen elizabeth who was by all accounts an incredibly stoic and wise woman who loved her country was also a devout woman of faith. And something that I'm very concerned about is that her death is only going to continue the secularization of Great Britain. It seems as if the, as the bloodline continues. That's really funny. At least he acknowledges the British Empire is more benign than the American Empire. No, he doesn't acknowledge that. Listen, dude, listen. I, I, I mean, this is, this is just giving the game away okay it's just giving the game away you're you're literally and and this is exactly exactly the same energy as like so many of these motherfuckers who who were upset with my commentary on the matter you you're just an animal at that point you don't know what you're doing you're just reacting the fucking shapes on the screen you're reacting in the most predictable way possible you're like oh dude, immediately i have to defend those in power that's what I have to do. That's my, that's my job. I have to defend those in power. That's, that's uh, what my role is here. This is a person who is powerful. I have to defend empire. I have to defend that, uh, defend that plunder as best as I can. Even if it's literally the fucking, uh, it, even if it's literally the empire that, you know, the founding fathers who he loves uh, escaped from and fought back against. The irony of Kirk saying separation of church and state is a good thing and then saying secularism is bad. Yeah, I know people that will now be taking the throne literally and taking the crown do not have the reverence for the church like she does or she did i'm sorry it's the civilizing force man these fuckers are racist as fuck exactly look it, it's just like he is 
he is trapped, trapped in this bind. He is bound here to uh, the idea of white supremacy and defending white supremacist attitudes and defending uh, imperialism, right? But also, America fought back against the, the British Empire. And that was kind of like one of the best things that the Founding Fathers did. You know what I mean? So like, what? Like, was the British Empire uh, uh, going to be a, a far superior uh, mode of governance than than the American Constitution? Because that is a disgustingly anti-American take. I mean, holy shit. Can, on the one hand, hail American emancipation, American freedom, American liberty. You can't fucking celebrate Fourth of July, basically, is what I'm saying, while simultaneously saying that the British Empire was a civilizing force for good. Interesting to know that when having to choose between white supremacy and American patriotism, they choose white supremacy. Yeah. Well, they're also, the other reason is because American, uh, the American foundation is also centered around white supremacy. We already knew that, though, but this is just another uh, example of this. Americans did a total of two good things for the world and decided that work was done, and now they're allowed to do infinitely more evil shit, and it's all justified because they did two good things. Yeah, defeating the Nazis with the help of the USSR, and also uh, defeating the British Empire. That is wild, though. Tucker Carlson defending the monarchy. Charlie Kirk defending the monarchy. Whitewashing uh, the Queen's legacy. This is all the exact same energy. It's just surf brain, peasant brain. Today in Scotland, as you likely know, at the age of 96, she was the longest serving monarch in British history. It's not easy to maintain your dignity while living in the public eye. Most of us could not pull it off for an afternoon. Queen Elizabeth did it for more than 70 years. I want to ask you all, she wrote shortly before her coronation. You can recognize the monarchy as an institution is problematic while still understanding the necessity of it in countries that have built their constitution on it, i.e. Canada. Wait, what do you mean? No, you can't. No, I can't understand the necessity of it. It's just f***ing ridiculous. You're just describing how cucked you are by slapping on a word like necessity. In 1953, whatever your religion may be, to pray for me on that day, to pray that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. For the most part, she did just that. And that was not a small achievement given the period she lived in. The week that Elizabeth was coronated, Edmund Hillary became the first man in history to summit Mount Everest. The achievement seemed symbolic at the time, Britain on top of the world. But in fact, Britain was already over, whether the British knew it or not. To this day, Britain claims to have won both of the 20th century's world wars, but together they destroyed that nation forever. After victory came humiliation. Oh my God, is he saying that decolonization was awful and bad because it ruined the, the Britain? That's one of the most insane things I've ever heard. He's just straight up saying that it was actually better. They blew a 13 colony lead and it was so, like when I say England blew a 13 colony lead, I'm making a joke, right? Tucker Carlson's like, no, seriously, it was so good. What the fuck, you fucking idiots. The empire evaporated, and along with it, Britain's self-confidence and ultimately its self-respect. It's hard to believe now, but Britain wasn't always a regional banking center slash refugee camp. It was a real place with a history and a language. Yeah, and that's a the worst part and about genuinely it. Genuinely remarkable people. A country in the North Atlantic, the size of Alabama, that somehow took over the world and ruled it with decency unmatched by any empire in human history. The British Empire was not perfect but it was far more humane than any other, ever. It's gone now, barely even remembered. Queen Elizabeth II was the last living link to a truly great Britain. Today on social media, the usual ghouls celebrated her death. Quote, may her pain be excruciating, a Carnegie Mellon professor called Uju Anya wrote on Twitter of the Queen. May she die in agony. Various know-nothings in the media, including a columnist at The Atlantic and a couple of employees of NBC News, seconded that thought. That's the, the ghouls are out to gloat over her death. By the way, remember, these guys love talking about, like, some random college professor that got fired over free speech, right? That's, like, 90% of the content for all these podcast people. And look how they treat someone who just got fired over their fucking exercising of freedom of speech. She didn't even say anything wrong. She said everything right. She didn't even lie. She did not tell a lie. She didn't even embellish. When she said the chief monarch, which is true, of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire, which is also true, is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. That part is the insensitive part. The British Empire was evil, they wrote, apparently totally unaware of what came after. 
motherfucker really confirming the ordinary Americans he signals to are just truly just white people? Nothing to do with being American? Yeah. Like, what, what, what do you mean? Ordinary Americans? You think some, you think some motherfucker in West Virginia gives a shit that this old broad croaked or not? What are you, crazy? No, that's just a way to uphold white supremacy. It's a beacon, a figurehead for a white supremacist empire, and you are upset that a black woman, a college professor, said some true things and maybe a little bit of insensitive things in the aftermath of that. After it. And speaking of what did come after the British Empire, how, for example, did Africa fare after the British left? Let's see. Uganda got Idi Amin. Who oh, my God. He's not going to fucking do this. Emancipation was bad for black people. That's what he's saying. I wonder if there was a precursor for that. Maybe when you fucking, you know, do the genocide and the theft the resource extraction, and then continue to plant and install your puppet fucking uh, leaders, then at the end, you know, it doesn't fare really well for those people. Rhodesia became Zimbabwe and then became the poorest country on the planet under the racist lunatic Robert Mugabe. As of tonight, South Africa is still being Ooh, run into Rhodesia the call by out. a company kleptocrat called Cyril Ramaphosa. So it's hard to see any of that as an improvement because it's not an improvement. Sorry, Atlantic Magazine. And now, of course, the entire continent of Africa has a new master, the Chinese government. China is the latest colonial power to dominate Africa. Its subjects will be pining for the British soon. The very least you can say about the English is that they took their colonial responsibilities seriously. They didn't just take things, they added. When the US government withdrew from Afghanistan after 20 years, we left behind airstrips, shipping containers, and guns. When the British pulled out of India, they left behind an entire civilization, a language, a legal system, schools, churches, and public buildings. All hey, uh, yeah, China is not Chinese colonialism, which is not even the same as like what uh, the West has done to Africa regardless, but we're not going to get into the weeds of it, is not good for Africa. Yes, Tucker Carlson is openly stating that Africans are barbarians, or he's implying that Africans are barbarians, right? and that they need masters. He even used the term master very specifically, okay? He's saying that these uncivilized hordes need a civilizing force atop them, okay? On top of them, you know, teaching them, educating them on the ways of how the Western world, which is supreme, he says, uh, lives, okay? Well, it's just racism. But of course, when the Chinese do it, because in his world, he's saying China is doing the same thing, um, when they do it, it's not good because they're not white. That's it. The, you, you have to literally look at exactly what he's saying. He's, one, saying that Africa needs a white master to keep it in check and civilize it, be the civilizing force. But when it has a Chinese master, which is doing the same thing in his mind, which I don't think they are, but still, it's not good. It's only good when the British Empire did it because the Chinese people are not white. You know what would be infinitely better for every African nation? Not to have been fucking enslaved for centuries. All of which are still in use today. Here's the train station the English built in Bombay, for example. There's nothing like that in Washington, D.C. right now, much less in Kabul or Baghdad. Today, India is far more powerful than the U.K., the nation that once ruled it. And yet, after 75 years of independence, has that country produced a single building as beautiful as the Bombay train station that the British colonialists built? No, sadly, it has not. Not one. So despite what they may... Oh my god. Dude, this is literally just straight up nerdy fascist shit. It's like white supremacy is baked into every facet of our existence, and that implies that even white architecture is better than brown architecture. Millions dead. But hey, listen, Taj Mahal, who cares? Colonial subjects uh, getting fucking owned endlessly, but also very cool train station. Next level white supremacy. You're, you're like a white supremacist history nerd. You may be claiming on Twitter tonight, the British Empire was more than just genocide. In fact, the British did not commit genocide, except arguably against the Dutch during the Boer War. The British did give the world the Magna Carta and habeas corpus and free speech. Dude, that's the same thing that fucking Charlie Kirk said. He's saying the same thing that Charlie Kirk said. They helped end the transatlantic slave trade, as well as the ritual murder of women. They did the transatlantic slave trade. What do you mean they helped end it? Oh my God. I know that white people did the transatlantic slave trade, but also they ended it. Think about that. Are we going into the conservatives want a monarchy phase? Conservatives have always wanted a monarchy because the monarchy represents white supremacy. Hello. 
This is why I was so fucking adamant about saying smoking on the queen pack yesterday. I know a lot of people didn't understand it because they don't know anything about the queen and they don't know anything about British Empire and they don't know anything about fucking, uh, you know, they just see like a lovely old lady who's got a fuckload of great PR around her that 80% of the fucking country supports, like in England, right? And and she's dying and you're like, oh, making jokes about her death. How fucking, how dare you? How stupid? How fucked up? Maybe those people, if they come back to the fucking chat now that they're like angry or now that they're less angry about it, will recognize that they were defending this. Okay, because this is the white supremacist fucking approach to the monarchy. Of course he's going to defend it.